Okay, so patience is actually the process. One of the things that people have to recognize is that getting sick or becoming ill is an imbalance that has been created over a years, years. Sometimes it's decades, sometimes it's two decades, sometimes it's three decades. Sometimes it's from childhood because most people develop serious illnesses when they're in their middle age, you know, at mid age. So that would have been sometimes as a result of adverse childhood events. So you're talking about an entire lifetime to get ill. So therefore, there needs to be recognition that healing or getting better cannot take place in the course of a set of antibiotics or a set of juicing, you know. People need to recognize that the healing process not just involves the physical um, adjustment, but it in involves healing of the mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the self. When someone has a trauma, that trauma leaves scars emotionally and mentally. And so the healing requires going back, looking at what the root of the issue was, and then resolving those issues. In other words, you can't undo them, you can't take them away, but coming to some sort of acceptance that the thing has happened and releasing the thing that has happened. That cannot happen overnight. It requires attention, it requires commitment, it requires inner work. People have to commit to the inner work. A lot of people tend to want to outsource their healing journey. They rely on someone else. They rely on different modalities. They rely on a set of medications. They rely on um, a process of, okay, I'm gonna eat different or a lifestyle change. And they think just because they've done that, that's going to be, you know, they're gonna get the fruits right away. So healing is almost like a, a tree, a fruit tree. When you plant the seed, you can't reap the fruits right away. It takes quite a number of years for the tree to become mature and then to bear the fruits. In the same way, the process of healing requires a time and then the outcome would be the healed state. The fruit of the process would be the healed state. So patience is required. Patience is actually a part of the mental and emotional process of healing. And you know, it is definitely a component. It's just like weight loss as well. And I'm, and I'm referring to weight loss because weight loss is, I mean, being overweight is a sign of physical imbalance. It's not an illness, but it is a sign. And so people will want to try to resolve that by losing weight and they are given certain things and say, okay, this is the way you lose weight. This is the process, da, 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 da. And then they try it, it doesn't work. They get frustrated. There is no patience around it. Just because they saw that someone lost 40 pounds in three months, this can happen to you. The truth is every human is different. And so every human's process is going to be different and patience is required for each person on an individual level with patience with themselves, patience with the modality they've chosen and patience with just the results that they are seeking. So patience is absolutely a part. And I tell you something, when the patience is mastered is usually just about the time when the healing occurs because impatience is a part of the imbalance that got you into this state in the first place. Okay, so taking a holistic approach to managing your health is very important. I am also seeing this disturbing trend where people are just working 
on one aspect of their healthy lifestyle. Um, the most prominent one, of course, is the trend of going to the gym. Mm -hmm. I have no difficulty with people going to the gym and working out to build strength, mm -hmm. flexibility, and so on. But what is happening, I'm seeing a lot of people bulking, mm -hmm. building the muscles, sculpting the body, when in truth and in fact, what they should be doing is sculpting the spirit sculpting and strengthening the mental aspects of themselves and also sculpting and strengthening the emotional and spiritual aspects of themselves. So what I am observing are a lot of people who are very fit, very flexible, and they are suffering from anxiety and taking anxiety medication. They are emotional basket cases. They can't maintain a relationship with their other half because they don't even know how to communicate. So those kinds of imbalances show me that, you know, there is, there is no systematic approach to managing the self. And once you're, once you're talking about the self, you have to be talking about the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual self. You have to. It is impossible to talk about one without the other. They are all inextricably bound. If you don't eat well, your mental state, your cognition, and your intelligence are going to be impacted. So you must eat well. Mm -hmm. Some people are only eating for the physical look. So they're only taking proteins to bulk and they're only taking this and that so that they don't put on fat. That's insanity right there. In fact, there is a form of insanity that I'm seeing. Those people who are nine and 10 hours in the gym every day, that is not a balanced person. Not a balanced person. If you spend 80, you know, 90 minutes per day in the gym, that is consistency and we can't frown upon consistency. But hours every day is a sign of some kind of imbalance. And if you are a person who is listening to this, you need to rein it back in and dedicate some time to being alone, some quiet time, some time for meditation, some time for reflection and reading, some time for doing physical work, some time for cleaning your space, some time for spending with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend, some time for spending with your children, sometimes for nourishing and nurturing yourself, mm -hmm. nurturing your spirit, right? So we need to, you know, people need to stop and just look at themselves and try to determine whether the approach that they're taking with their lifestyle change you know, their, their, you know, their adjusted lifestyle is a balanced one. It is important for us to interact with, with people. You need time for family. It is important to address your, your professional life. Uh, uh, that's another thing that we're observing. People spending so much time on their professional life that they have no time for family. That is just as detrimental. Spending so much time with your professional life that you have no time for friends. That's detrimental. Mm -hmm. Spending so much time on your professional life that you have no time for relationships. That is insanity again. So I think we've all, we're all living in this really insane world where there are societal expectations that are just demanding. And we have to push back and say, no, weekends are mine. We have to push back and say, my phone is going to be switched off at 8 p.m. I will take no more phone calls. I am spending quiet time with my family, with my friends. So this is how you take care of your, yourself. This is how you balance everything. You know, take some time, go into nature. That's important too. You cannot be in a concrete environment, in air-conditioned building, um, straight from your workplace into your um, home space and you don't have a chance to walk outside to take in some fresh air you know so it's all about balance 
It's all about giving attention to every aspect of yourself. Well, I think it has to be thought out. You have to sit and consciously make a decision to ensure that everything is balanced. I have oftentimes said to some of my friends who are workaholics mm. that you have to step back. There's people in your exact capacity that have the time to go to the gym, that have the time to get a massage, that have the time to go and get a, take a two-day vacation. Why aren't you able to do that? The reason why you are not able to do that is that you have never made the effort to do it. You have never carved out the time and set the intention to do it. So I think to answer that question, people have to set the intention to have a balanced lifestyle, to dedicate as much time to themselves as to their partners, to their family, to their professional job, and then to their spiritual growth, emotional growth, um, personal growth and development. Those things are important. Some people end up aging mm. and having arrested development in specific areas of, of their lives. You know, uh, when we're young, we all like to go out clubbing, dancing, partying. And then you see some people who are in their late, you know, I'm not going to call any digits, and they're still partying. They have not evolved mm -hmm. as a person. They have not evolved themselves emotionally or spiritually. They're still stuck in the partying, youthful mm -hmm. years and so on. So we also have to intentionally look at the stage that we're at and ensure that we are, you know, acquiring wisdom, acquiring knowledge, and putting that together with our spiritual, emotional selves and, and, and growing ourselves as a person. Perspective is the entire game. Many people have perspectives that are based on childhood traumas, on interpersonal relationship with parents or older persons in your lives, um, societal um, experiences and personal experiences, right? So that is how people form their perspective. Now, for example, in Jamaica, we have this term for those people who are very rigid in their ways and they're set in their ways, we'll tease them and say, oh, you're growing with your granny. They have certain principles because they have seen what their, their grandmothers are doing and their grandmothers have also instilled certain principles and behaviors into them. Now, those principles are going to color the perspective of the individual. And so, we are in modern times, and if you have the perspectives of 40 and 50 and 70 years ago, then you're going to struggle with certain aspects of modern life. So the trick is to be open and receptive to different perspectives, different ways, and then you forge your own position on certain areas because you will be required at different stages and situations in your life to shift your perspective to be able to handle a situation, right? Even something as dramatic as a serious illness. If you're coming from a situation where you just never had um, remedies or... or uh, uh, solutions to those health challenges. Your perspective is with, oh my goodness, me sick, may I go dead now. Whereas someone who knows can come in and say to you, listen, there are some solutions. Let us try this. Immediately they've shifted your perspective. Even with someone who is going through a bout of depression and anxiety and even to the extent of being suicidal, sometimes all that is required is a shifted perspective being shared with them. 
Because for someone who is depressed and someone who is suicidal, they are having a conversation in their head. Oh, it's, it's useless. Nobody loves me. Um, there is no hope. All that's required is someone saying to them, but there is hope. I love you. Let's have a, a conversation. So sometimes it's as simple as shifting the perspective through a conversation with another human who has a totally different perspective. And this is why friendships are so very important. Persons who have a good circle of friends around them will know that this is the friend I can talk to about my personal affairs. This is the friend that can, I can talk to and they will give me some perspectives on health issues. This is the friend that has some good perspectives on financial issues and will. this is the friend who will be able to give me some strategic advice on how to navigate this scenario. Perspectives, it's all about perspectives and sometimes all that is required to navigate a situation is a small shift in your perspective. One of the other things that I think is very important for people to learn to shift their perspectives from, it's just observing, observation. Observing other people who have gone through the same situation as you, what they did. Observing other situations that have created certain outcomes. And just looking at that and seeing how you can adjust your perspective and your actions to mirror those observations that you made, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't all have to go through an unpleasant experience. I tell people all the time, I prefer to live or, or learn through my experiences and your experiences. Watch, observe, look at your friends, look at your friend circle. Look at the experiences they are having or they have had so that you can see those red flags when they start to appear in your life and you can say okay that red flag okay let me go left mm -hmm. i don't want to go into that let me go right mm -hmm. right so we really must be keen observers right i'm even tempted to bring into this discussion the whole issue of social media what we call you know, the superstars, and we see what they go through in their relationships, which are very public relationships. And there are lots of lessons watching those people. You can take a position to align with the position that they've taken, or you can say, I need to stay away from that. I'm going to bring up one, one, one situation and, and it's something that I've been observing. This situation where women are looking at men and saying, well, they must pay and they must spend their money and they will have nothing to do with a man that has no money. And I'm very disturbed about that situation because it means that the young women, the modern women, are in no way, shape, or form looking at the inside of a person, looking at the beauty of a person. They're just looking at one thing, and that's the bank book of the person, the bank account of that person. And so if there are other traits or characteristics of the person that are not desirable, you will overlook that just for the money? Well, we are seeing it play out now where men and women are married and they're millionaires and then when they separate they're seeing the ulterior motive play out where the woman's intention is to just totally clean out uh, you know carry the man to the laundry just take away all his money so we have to be aware and we have to to to, to gauge ourselves both the men men look 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 out, if you have to be proving yourself financially to a woman, then perhaps that's not the right woman. Woman, if you have to be looking only at that, then you need to check yourself. Look at the whole person. There are lots of people that are suffering because they chose only that. They have no love. 
they have no body nobody to lean on nobody's shoulders to cry on nobody to celebrate with because the person has to be busy making the cheese to make you happy so that they have lost all of their humanity themselves so both of us have a responsibility both men and women to ensure that we keep humanity in our relationships and not just look at the material okay to know thyself is to understand the self to understand your existence within the context of humanity to understand your existence with the context within the context of the world to understand your existence within the context of the universe one needs to understand those things and yes some people have told me that they have been able to acquire that knowledge through just sitting in silence in meditation personally for me i have had to do a lot of reading of philosophers i've had to do a lot of reading around the different religions i've had to do a lot of reading around different just philosophies different kinds to be able to understand my existence within the context of the world within the context of humanity within the context of society within the context of the universe so i believe to know thyself one has to understand where you sit in this thing when you understand that then you can now step back a little and spend more time now understanding your past your your life so far you know how did you grow up why were you placed in that family why did you have to endure this why did you have to to go to that school and and interact with those people all of those questions are questions that you ask yourself as you are going along the path of knowing yourself you have to question everything when you question those things then you start to read around why this happens why does life seem unfair why do some people seem to have it all and some people have nothing why are some people healthy and strong and why are some people sick and feeble right when you look at life and observe again then you start to search for the answers once you start to search for the answers the answers also are searching to the, to find you right they say seek and ye shall find so i believe that we are not to just come on this earth and just eat sleep entertain ourselves have some children work somewhere and then leave we are we have a duty to be on this earth to understand ourselves to understand our purpose then when you're understanding your reason for being your raison d'etre then you're going to try to be on purpose you're going to try to make your contribution in this lifetime to the earth you're going to try to make your contribution um at the societal level you're going to try to make a contribution perhaps even at the national level for your country you're going to make your contribution in helping people helping people in whatever capacity whether it's as a teacher whether it's as a philanthropist whether is you know whatever level you will have greater purpose when you know who you are and what you are here to do so i think knowing thyself is a very important thing and to be able to know thyself requires a lot of questioning and a lot of searching i think my advice would be for people on both sides of the this the fence the haters and the and the hated that situation requires everyone to step back and look at themselves and check themselves 
right? We need to understand that we are all one and we should love each other. Society is what teaches us to hate and to be jealous and to be envious, right? But we have to step outside of what society is teaching us and stop, check ourselves and ensure that we are being as neutral as possible at all times. And that if anything, energetically, we are exchanging, it's love. Love is the highest frequency. And I know that is one of the most common sentences that like, people like to repeat. And sometimes people don't understand what love is. Love is not just falling in love with a guy that you like or a girl that you like. Love is the ability to empathize with another human being and understand that what they're going through and support them in whatever way you can. That's love. Love is the ability to see that another human being is hurting, even if they don't show that they're hurting. Love is to be able to see another human that need in need and to, if you possibly can, give them what they need, right? Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes with how society is structured, you may not have, so you cannot give. And so there is a little bit of defensiveness on your side. And so because you feel bad about not, you respond in the exact opposite way by berating the person for whatever reason. So I, I, I can't even give advice to the haters because I don't understand exactly where it's coming from. No, I'm not sitting here holier than thou saying that I have never hated. But what I can tell you is that if I do have hatred towards someone or something, it is a reaction to some stimuli that has been directed towards me. Okay? And so I, I just want to urge people to stop just being a hater because it's fashionable or it's trending. You know, try to see the beauty in every person. Try to see the humanity in every person. Try to see the pain that might be manifesting as, um, you know, ego. Because sometimes we'll see someone and we say, but she's full of herself or he's so full of himself. He's so cocky. Not understanding that that behavior is indicative of pain. And that what is required is not hate, but love. What is required is not hate, but empathy. Now, for the persons who are being hated upon, you also need to check yourself because people will not hate you if you are a good, pure, sweet person. So obviously, there is some energetic exchange. What you're giving off is what you're getting back. Mm -hmm. This is how it works. This is just the universal law. What you give is what you get back. It doesn't have to be in exactly the same form, but if you are kind and generous and sweet, you will get nothing but love. I, I guarantee that. It is very rare for people to hate you if you are a good person. So if you are hated, Step back, check yourself, and see what you have to do to ensure that you are not giving off negative energy that is mi being mirrored back to you. Because what people don't realize, invariably, most of the time, half of the experiences that we're having are ourselves being mirrored back to us. So if you are being hated, is there something hateful you are doing? Is there something hateful that you are saying? Do you, you know, be guarded with what you say and how you say it? Because people will be triggered by the things you say. So on both sides, I would just like to ask everyone to stop and check themselves. 
And when you check yourself, it's not. Everybody knows what a good person is. Everybody knows what kindness is. Everybody knows what generosity is. Everyone knows those things. So I don't have to tell you that you have to check yourself and go and learn how to be kind because you know what generosity is. If you have much and you can share, that's generosity. You will not have any haters. If you can help someone in need, and you do, I guarantee nobody will hate you for helping. So just everybody just needs to step back and check themselves. Oh, by the way, a hater is a modern phenomena mm -hmm. because it was, it's trending. I mean, we always knew that people sometimes had likes and dislikes, you know, my spirit takes to you, we get along. Mm -hmm. My spirit doesn't take to you, we don't get along. But I don't hate you. Mm -hmm. I just don't spend a lot of time around you. So there is no reason to go out of your way to hate someone. Get rid of that emotion. That is a useless emotion that will not serve you and it will not serve the other person. In fact, that emotion of hatred and hating is more detrimental to you physically and your physical body than anything else. Mm -hmm. So cut back on the hating. Mm -hmm. Busy minds, or what they call monkey mind in the meditation circles, is a phenomenon. I think it's a, it's a creation of modern society. Our society is so fast paced now People are into instant gratification. Mm -hmm. People want to get rich quickly. People want to meet someone today. They're in bed tomorrow. They're married the day after that, right? So people are constantly um, working in their minds of how to achieve that, how to get that, how to, to make that happen and quickly. That is not how we're designed. Suppose the day decided that it needed to fast track itself. Then we'd have a shorter day. The sun would say, listen, man, I need to get up and I need to get this thing going. And then the, sun, you know, the moon needs to come take over. We'd have six hour days. We'd have three hour days. Nature, by its very nature, is a process. It has a long time span for things to happen. And so when we deviate from that, that's when we have busy minds because our minds are contriving as to how to make this happen. How can I fill my bank account quickly? How can I get that girl? She doesn't like me, but I want her. How can I get my body to look like this even though I wasn't born this way? How can I um, get um, to the top in my career even though I'm only 23? I want to be at the top of my career. It's just unnatural. So then, because people have these unrealistic goals, then their minds are constantly at work trying to figure out how to achieve those unrealistic goals. Also, with social media, we're seeing these anomalies where a 22-year-old becomes a millionaire or someone who was 300 pounds is now 120 pounds. And we feel like this is achievable. And so we are... And then the, 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 the mind is working, working, working. Now, because the mind has been programmed to do that and has been doing it for so many years, the mind now knows nothing else about slowing down and sitting down in the lawn and watching a blade of grass and some butterflies flitting over the grass and then a bee coming in. They're like, that, 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 my mind can't process anything as slow as that. Our minds are so warped right now that we don't even like to prepare meals. We just want fast food. We want to zip in and zip out with our fully cooked meals. What happens is that we can now no longer slow down our minds and then our bodies and our central nervous system our autonomic nervous system, all of them get thrown out of whack. This is the root of disease half of the time. We are switched on constantly. 
if you kept your car running day and night without switching it off, what would happen to the engine? Same way the human body, it has to be switched off and switched on. So people who have very busy minds need to cultivate the ability to slow their minds down. Um, a lot of people will tell me, oh, no, 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 I can't meditate. Uh, my mind is too busy. Well, there are aids. You have on YouTube lots of channels with frequencies to calm the mind down, to slow down the mind, to get you into a relaxed state. So if you cannot do it on your own, find the tools on YouTube. There are frequencies. There are subliminals. There are um, just so many things that you can play mm -hmm. with a headphone that will slow down your brain waves on purpose. There are alpha waves, there are theta waves. You can find all of those things on YouTube now. So really, there's no excuse. So you, if you really are struggling, find the tools on YouTube to slow down the mind. Just type in how to slow down the mind how to still the mind, you will find a whole lot of tools. So right now, at this day and age, there are no excuses. 40 years ago, there might have been an excuse, but not today. You have all the tools necessary on, um, on the internet. Just seek and you will find. So the golden age is something that the ancients have always spoken about. If you've done readings, you know, of, you know, ancient texts of indigenous groups, um, of philosoph philosophers, most of them have referenced this period called the Golden Age. The Golden Age has a lot to do with planetary alignments and alignments within the cosmos. Because as you know, our very existence is dictated by cycles. And there's a cycle of growth, and there's a cycle of stagnation, and there's a cycle of light, and there's a cycle of darkness. And so the ancients and the indigenous groups from all over the world have spoken of the different ages. They've always known the different ages. Um, and so we are told by the ancients, by various philosophers from all over the world, that based on the age that we are going through now, we are going to be happening upon the golden age very shortly. They have precursors to the golden age and everything that is happening now is indicative of the fact that we are entering into the golden age as it stands right now even the age of technology the age of um just information the age of development mechanization um, to automation those are indications that we are moving very closely towards the 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 golden age now different uh, groups of people have had different um, explanations or names for the golden age. So, for example, and, and I might get bashed for this, but I'm open to the bashing. Mm -hmm. There are some people who will reference the golden age. And Christians will reference the age, the return of Christ. I feel as if they are very similar because the golden age speaks to a time of absolute peace, abundance, harmony, almost like heaven on earth. And so they are saying that the golden age is, has already begun. They expect it to be around the 2030s, right? But as it stands, what we're seeing is a lot of uh, apocalyptic um, kinds of experiences taking place. We see wars and rumors of wars. We see famines. Uh, we see starvation. We see corruption. We see cor uh, control, manipulation. We see poverty. 
we see um, inequities, we see injustices, we see imbalances and so on. And we know that those are precursors to the golden age because it is impossible for things to continue in quite this way and, um, and there not be a collapse and uh, a recalibration as it were. So the golden age speaks to a complete shift in paradigm from this inequity and injustice and corruption and, and, and scarcity to one where people are harmonious. They understand the oneness. They understand nature and they decide to work in harmony with nature. They decide to preserve nature, right? So the golden age really speaks to a time of absolute harmony between man and nature and man with each other. Um, is it upon us now? We're seeing the signs that it is there. And I say that because I want you to think about the term, the golden age. It speaks to the term gold. Gold is a very high vibration. And gold, we get that golden light, that golden aura from the sun. Have you seen the sun's activity recently? We're having a lot of solar flares. So what is essentially happening is that humanity is taking on this golden vibration. The sun is bombarding the earth with all its energy, golden energy. The earth is taking on that golden aura. Humanity is also taking on that golden aura. So that is why we are having this age of awakening where people are opening their eyes to certain realities, recognizing that certain things are happening and certain things that they believed in before they realized that those weren't fully the truths. Mm -hmm. People are seeking the truth. And in seeking the truth, they're also changing their lives. They are believing more in taking care of themselves, their body. They're taking more time to spend with the family. They're recognizing what is important, truly important. And they're moving towards that. So we are realizing that Earth and the people of Earth are coming into this golden vibration together. The vibration is rising. The frequency is increasing. The consciousness levels are increasing. And so we are together moving towards the golden age. It's a process like everything else. It's going to take time. It's not going to be that we wake up tomorrow morning and the golden age started at exactly 9 a.m. Nothing like that. It's going to be a gradual process. Some of us will not even perceive that it is happening. But I can tell you it is happening. All of us are becoming more aware of the energy of the golden age. In this day and age right now, that's a very relevant question because we are now moving into the age where processed foods are being justified. We must understand that the only food that is high vibration is the food that grows out of the earth from soil that is made by nature. Now, I'm very specific because there's a lot of soil right now being sold, being manufactured. And so some of the processes the alchemical processes that take place through time, through night and day, through sun and rain and heat and cold, those alchemical processes are not taking place in the soil. So naturally, when you eat food from man-made soils, you're going to have a slightly different result than when you eat food from naturally made soil, right? And we can observe this. Let us look at the countries that are underdeveloped, the third world countries, mm -hmm. and let's look at the countries that are very developed. If you look at the, the rates of 
cancers and disease. There is so much more happening in the developed countries. Yet we'll say that the developed countries are the civilized countries. They have a higher per capita income. They have access to food. They have access to shelter and comfort. Yet they're still getting sick. Why is that? It has to do with the food. And I can tell because in traveling, I have gone to different countries and interacted with people. And there's lovely people all over the world and there's difficult people all over the world. And I've gone to countries where people, you know, developing countries where people are eating from the earth. Mm -hmm. And they are so much more still and natural and easygoing. So when you eat naturally, you have a naturally pleasant disposition. When you eat artificially and processed, you're going to have a lot of anxiety. You're going to have a lot of rigidity, inflexibility in the way that you are. If you are not doing extra things to ameliorate that. So, of course, we have lots of people in the the developed countries that are chill, that are smart, that are perceptive, that are philosophical and are very present. But they have to cultivate that on purpose. If you're not cultivating it, that food is going to ruin just your whole way of being. It's going to have you on a low vibration, right? So the high vibration foods, just to repeat, high vibration foods grow in natural environments, are ripened naturally by the sun and the natural processes. Foods that are have too much um, in, inputs from man tend to yield lower vibration. And it's not just the lower vibration, it's lower everything, lower mineral content, lower vitamin content, lower everything right because the human body is designed to eat food from the earth that is ripened by the sun from soils that are naturally made over millions of years you create a factory and make some soil over two weeks it cannot have the same value you're not going to achieve the same vibratory levels Eating a mango that was picked green and ripened by a chemical cannot give you the same high vibration as a fruit that bore, was born on a tree and was stayed on the tree and was sun ripened. And this is why people will always say, try to eat the foods that are in season and the foods that grow in your geographical location. Globalization has allowed for us to get fruits and vegetables from all over the world. We have no idea what kinds of chemicals they are putting on those fruits and vegetables to preserve them for the long trip, right? When you take in and ingest a lot of chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, and so on, it lowers your vibration. Think of each cell. Each cell has a particular vibration, a particular charge. And if you're taking in chemicals, from the food that you're eating, or foods that are grown with a lot of chemicals, then naturally every cell in your body is going to have a lower vibration and you yourself will have a lower vibration. Your ability to think, your cognition, your ability to interact with people is going to be arrested by that. Even, I would even go as far to say some of the the traits being exhibited by male and female right now towards each other in relationships has a lot to do with the poor quality food that they're eating and therefore their ability to intelligently assess and navigate situations. So a lot of people, Jamaicans included, have always wondered to themselves, what is it about Jamaica and Jamaicans? What, what is so special about us? And I, I wondered myself for many, many years, 
not only are our people special, our food, the food that is grown from the soils here in Jamaica, our ginger is one of the most potent in the world, our turmeric is one of the most potent in the world, our coffee is world renowned in the world, the flavors of it, even our red stripe beer is special. And it has a lot to do with the vibration of the country. Now, when people think of vibration, they just think, okay, it's the people. Well, it's a lot more than the vibration of the people. Because coming out of the people is the music. Coming out of the people is the dance moves. And we have an entire continent, the motherland, made of people just like us. So it has to be not just the people, but the place. Now, when Christopher Columbus was sailing the Western Hemisphere to find new lands, he was given very specific instructions. It was not just to find gold and silver and precious gems for his queen. It was specifically to search for and find the God Meridian. So 77 degrees west is considered the God Meridian. And for those people who understand that there are specific numbers and degrees, then they will understand that when they put those lines of latitude and longitude on the earth, there were some very specific reasons why they were drawn there. Now, for Jamaica, 77.0 degrees hits Jamaica right at Rio Nuevo on the north coast. If you think back in your history, the battle between the British and the Spanish took place at the Battle of Rio Nuevo in 1655. What were they fighting over? The colony, they say. But if one digs deeper, they find that that 77 degrees, which runs, by the way, from the North Pole, it runs through Canada, down through North America, through Cuba, through Jamaica, down Ecuador and Peru, and it goes further down. Every country that I've just named there is a powerhouse. Yes. Every country that I've just named is a powerhouse. The ones, the powers that be know the value of the 77th meridian and have tapped into it time and time again for control and for power. So the Jamaicans are here living very happily, doing their thing, dancing and so on, not knowing that they are very special people by virtue of living on this land and being born so close to the 77th meridian. It makes us special. The parish of St. Anne, is where the 77th meridian runs. Most of the 77th meridian, before it gets to 78 degrees, most of 77 goes right through St. Anne. Who do we have being born in St. Anne? Bob Marley, Marcus Garvey. <laughs> is that a coincidence? I don't think so. It's just a very high vibration um, uh, space. And we need to understand and value ourselves as a people in Jamaica because we are special. We have the energy of the 7-7, uh, 77th Meridian running through our veins. We were born here. We carry that vibration. That is why when Jamaicans go anywhere else in the world, they still shine. They carry that energy, that vibration with them. You know? Now, this year is very significant. 2023, if you add it up, is seven. Two plus two, four plus three, seven. And this year in July, um, I realized that we're actually going to have the 7th of July being a seven, seven, seven. Mm. And that, that's a portal, as you know. Even though it's a modern calendar, there is a, there is very specific reasons why the calendars were created in the way that we, they were. Mm -hmm. So the 777 is actually the opening of the portal, the 77 portal, the closing of it being the 25th 
of the 7th, 2023, that's another 777. So the period between that is just going to be very po powerful. And one of the things that we want to do here in Jamaica, and you can follow my Instagram page for details, is that we want to do a 777 activation. We're going to have Queen of Four here. She's going to do it with us on the 14th. So it's in the same portal. And anybody who is hearing this, if you're hearing it in time, you were meant to hear it in time. And we, we will do uh, an activation in St. Anne and we will do it virtually. The idea is, if you're interested, to gather people along the 77th Meridian. And by the way, just so you know, Washington DC is built on the 77th Meridian. The Pentagon in particular, they say, I'm told that um, if you fact check that, you might, it's not exactly the 77th degree, but think about it. What is seven and seven? It's 14. What is four on one? Five, five, pentagon. There's a lot of sacred geometry mixed in with these um, energy lines, ley lines, portals. So we just have to be a little bit more um, observant of what is happening and recognize that we are more powerful than we think we are. And we need to take back our power and ensure that we are not being used and manipulated to carry out works of people that just want the power. So I say, especially to my Jamaicans, stop, step back, look at yourself, how powerful you are, how you've been able to navigate storms when a whole group of Jamaicans sit down and say, okay, we're praying away this hurricane. You know, that hurricane <laughs> is shifting, you know? We have to believe in ourselves. We have to come together and tap into that power of the 77th Meridian by understanding that we are that power. And we need to unify, right? Our brothers and sisters in Cuba are also powerful people. They're untouchable. It's that 77th meridian again, right? But we need to understand it. So you can look out for my book later on this year. So you will get a better understanding of how we do that.